uh, let's have a look at number one. So I tried to start off uh, nice and gently. It does have these fractions in there. By the way, I, I did these, you know, under test conditions, so if I made an error, tell me. But, um, do I have any agreement? Any? I'm not getting any nods. Oh yeah, a few nods. Okay, alright. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah alright, I'm just, just looking at you and, um, when everyone gives me a strange look, I get really concerned. <laughs> oh, okay, sure, alright. So, let's just walk through this, um, together. And I wonder, as you're going through, if you feel like you've made an error, can you work out where and why? So I'll, I'll show you what I did. Hopefully, in some senses, I don't need to uh, talk through it because um, I hope my working stands by itself. I've multiplied every single term by 12. What was the purpose of that? To get rid of fractions. Yeah, I don't like those fractions. It makes it hard for my brain. These things can't interact with each other. So I multiply through by 12 and that removes all my fractions. Now just have a look at these numbers here. Where did they come from? Have a look. So, so this 4 here, right? Do you see the specific place it came from was 12 divided by 3? Right, do you see how I've cancelled there? And the 3 that comes afterwards comes from 12 divided by 4. Right, what gets left behind is the 3. Okay? Um, after that, this next line in here, all I've done is multiply through. 4 times 4, 3 times 3. 16 take away 9 left, last I checked is 7 and then the last thing I have to do is divide through. Are you happy with that? Are you talking about this line here, like the 24? Why is that there? Yeah. Yep. So what I've chosen to do, and I'll agree, a lot of people, what you're probably thinking as you look at this is you say, oh look, there are two fractions, I, maybe you even drew that and say, I'll, I'll cross multiply, okay? This is kind of dangerous because you're sort of uh, mixing up a strategy that you would use if you had a pair of fractions that were equal to one another, right? But these are not equal to one another. One is being subtracted from the other. So it's much more like this. See this here, right? We don't cross multiply. What we say is, oh, I want both of these fractions to have the same denominator. So you choose something to multiply through by. Uh, and that's exactly what I've done over here. The number I chose was 12. Uh, and the right hand side used to be 2. So then it becomes 24. So if you get the same, like you make it the same number, so 3 and 4. So yep. you did, but you put the odds up like uh, 4k times, what is it, to get 4 times 4 is 16k over 12. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, 12k over, yeah. sorry, not 12. Um, 9k over 12. Yeah, yeah that's fine. You that's fine. Equals, but then do you have to times the 2 by 3 and over 1 because you times it by the other side? Okay, now, this is a really important question because I'm sure some people have gotten confused on this exact point. Okay, can you just have a look at my. Um, let's change the color so you don't get too confused. Just have a look at this pink working up here. Okay, now, how is this. Is it purple? Yeah. Whatever color it is, fuchsia. Um, what have I done here? And how is it different to what I did in my original working in blue? Okay. Uh, what I've done here is that, can you see that this fraction and this fraction are actually the same fraction, right? It's just that I've written them with larger numerators and denominators, but it's actually the same thing. If you canceled out, you'd come back to 4K on three, okay? Um, therefore, this is also the same fraction and this number over here, I haven't touched it. Nothing has happened. I don't need to multiply anything through. Alternatively, what I've done over here is I have changed all the numbers. Uh, 12 times 4K on 3 is not the same as 4K on 3. It's 12 times bigger. So instead, what I've elected to do is make everything 12 times bigger because then I don't have any fractions. Okay? So I, either of those will work. Um, if I had have done this the first time, at this point, uh, 16k minus 9k is still going to be 7k over 12. Hey, but look, now you've got to get rid of that 12 anyway. So you get rid of the 12 later, I got rid of the 12 first. Eventually, you're going to have to do it. It's just a matter of early or later. Are you happy with that? Does that make sense? Yeah? Let's have a look at this ship. Here's my diagram. Yes. Okay. Um, now you'll sort of get like 50-50 in terms of questions where you get handed the diagram 
and questions where one of the skills we are trying to assess is can you understand this well enough to make the diagram yourself? Because that is its own skill. Do you see how I've done it? I've got a compass rose. Why have I got a compass rose up there? So you can draw your 37 degrees. Yeah, that's right. So I can measure my angle around. It's got to be measured off something. Yeah? You 12. You 12. Stay with me just so we can finish this. I promise there'll be time for discussion, just not just yet. I've got my distance on there. Really all you needed, the bare minimum, would have been this. If you had that, I, I think that's enough. Do you see I've got all the information in the question? I've got the bearing, I've got the distance, I've got A and I've got the ship. Uh, however, I did add on all of this extra stuff. Why, why'd I do that? Because I'm using the diagram for part B. So here's my answer. You can see what I've had to do is in my diagram, the 127 degrees is useful, but it's not inside the triangle I need. So you see what I've done, right? 37 is that little angle inside the triangle. That's the one I want to work with, right? Why have I said cos? Ha 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 ha, okay. I've said cos because in the triangle, the side I want is x up the top. I labeled it because I want to know what it is, which is adjacent to the angle. And then the angle I, sorry, the side I know is 78, which is the hypotenuse. So adjacent hypotenuse, that's cos. Uh, from there, I just crunched the numbers. Were you happy with that? I know I didn't ask for a particular level of accuracy, but it wasn't that important. Uh, all the other stuff that was earlier on was the important stuff. Okay, let's have a look at the plane. So you screwed up over What what I do? Was your calculator the wrong mode? I did warn you, and if you borrow a calculator, this will happen. Uh, yes. That recording number thing I'll have a look and see the buttons first. I'll have a look and see what happens. Okay. Um, okay, so I just want you to look at my diagram. Have a look. Now the first thing I've done is I've marked in the angle of depression. Do you see it over there in blue? That is the angle I want. This is the plane. However, the angle I want is not inside a triangle, at least not yet. So can you see what I've done over here? That angle is the same. Why is it the same again? Thank you, I've got parallel lines here and alternate angles on parallel lines are equal. So if I can find this one, that means I can find the angle of depression and I'm done. Okay. So then all I did was I formed uh, the right triangle over there. Opposite on adjacent is 10. Yeah? So that's the angle I got. Okay, you 12. We're almost there. Here are my simultaneous equations. Now, we have, uh, we have three main methods for doing these. You could draw it, but ain't nobody got time for that. Uh, we can do it by substitution. Or you could do it by this. What have I done? Starts with an E. I've done it by elimination. Okay. So have a look. Why did I do that? Why did I take an equation and multiply? Because you've got to get y to equal three y as well. I'm looking at the y's, right? Yeah. So if I've got a plus three y on the top and a minus three i y on the bottom, they'll eliminate. So I've just got to get the three y on the top. That was me here, right there. I got the three y on the top. Don't forget, you multiply every single term by 3, otherwise it doesn't stay balanced anymore. Multiply. Okay, uh, like I said there. Yep. Isn't there a method where you could have a, a third equation? There's one equation. You know you write 1, 2, 3. There's a way with it. Here and here. Well, I, I kind of have a third equation there, but instead of calling it equation 3, I've just given it a different name. Does anyone remember why I gave it this name? So that I know where it came from, so I don't put it back into itself, okay? Because we saw how that worked. I Then I added them. There's the eliminated 
variable there, the y's have disappeared, uh, and then it, it goes from there. Are you happy? Does that make sense? By the way, shh, 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 quick question before I go to the last one. Um, once you get x, you can substitute it into either equation. Why did I choose equation 1? You, it's easier, but what makes equation 1 easier? No negatives, no other numbers. Look, the y that I want is just sitting there by itself. Uh, which is why you can see I don't have to divide through by anything, don't have to flip any negative signs, it's just there. Okay? Alright, last question. Okay. So I'm going to stand up now, because I don't have to sit here and grab this thing. Okay? Now, shh, shh, shh. changing the subject. What changing the subject is about is that at the moment the equation is all set up so that if you know x and g, you can find out what t is. Okay, you just plug them in, you calculate it, does all the work, and then ta-da, there's t. But supposing you don't know what g is, but you know what these guys are, we want to rearrange. So what I've done is I've said, okay, well I'm just going to do step by step, I'm just going to peel back the layers until I can get to g on its own. What have I done on my first line of working? Divided. I've divided through by 2 pi because it's just like running through a series of hurdles. You've got to run through the, the closer ones before you get to the far ones. And the 2 pi is the easiest thing to get rid of. So I divide it through. It ends up over here. Uh, have a look at this line. When I go from 1 to 2, what's happening? I square because I don't want this in the way. So to get rid of the square root, I square. Don't why forget did, here though. Why right? does the, pi go up, the 2 pi go up to 4 pi? Yeah, great question. I've got a t and a 2 and a pi and everything gets squared. So t squared is fine, pi squared is fine. What's 2 squared? It's 4. Right? So that's why this number changes. I've got the g looking a lot closer. What happens from line 2 to line 3? What have I done? It has a fancy name, it starts with an r. I've taken the reciprocal. You take the reciprocal on one side, like that, you've got to do it to the other one as well. So that's why they're both upside down. Last line. That x is in the way. It's being divided. So the opposite of dividing by x is you multiply through by x. And there's your answer.